a cyanobacteria, otherwise known to a lot of people as blue-green algae, have been around for millions of years. So they are ubiquitous around the planet. It just so happens that in lakes, when we add excess nutrients to lakes, there are certain types of cyanobacteria that bloom. And unfortunately, some of them are acutely toxic to both humans and wildlife, as well as our pets. Every lake system has their own ecosystem. And what we're trying to find is what particular nutrients leads to a all harmful algal bloom in a particular lake system, whether it be Lake Erie or Lake Superior and Green Bay. So I go like almost every month in the summer to Green Bay. So when we are in the field, there's this cloth filter that I use and I filter my water using a pump. I come to the lab and I filter all those 80 to 120 liters of water in the span of like two or three days. And it has been in the room temperature and we see there is some algal growth. So one of the really exciting things about this project is that we're bringing together labs that have their own specialty. The Bullerjan Lab in Bowling Green State University is expertise in genomics. So they are going to be looking at the genes that the cyanobacteria use to make toxins. The Sterner Lab in Duluth has expertise in taxonomy of the algae, as well as the relative abundance of different nitrogen species, as well as phosphorus. And then my lab has expertise in toxin analysis. The cyanobacteria, they literally make hundreds of thousands of different molecules that could be toxic. So this is all the lake samples from three different lakes? We're talking about two years of experimentation across seasons in three different water bodies. That's unprecedented. I don't think that that's been done before, or at least not very often. Harmful algal blooms affect more than just human health. They also affect things like our ability to produce clean, safe drinking water that's cheap. We have a large amount of work to do with farmers in America, with agriculture, to try and understand how we can stem the tide of nutrients, but yet still make food for the country.